All right, <clears throat> all right. So let's recap what we've what we've covered um, recently. So what we're going through now <clears throat> in this chapter until now has been the um, has been the I, I don't want to call it dichotomy, but it's really been the classification of all the different elements of creation, everything that exists. So we split it into lots of different parts. We split it between spiritual and physical, and then we had a, one exception to that, which was the shadim, which were kind of neither here nor there. And then we had the uniqueness of man, which is the only creature to be made up of both spiritual and physical um, in, their, in their truest senses. Uh, so then we talked about how within the spiritual world there is a connection to the physical world, and we focus a lot on how everything that happens and everything that exists in the physical world is a manifestation of a spiritual power. So we, call, we talked about the kachos, the kachos, the, the powers, literally is what they're called, um, and those are spiritual creations which um, are the source for everything physical that, again, happens and that exists. Um, and then we talked about how those are not angels, or malachim, I, I prefer to call them, because angels is, is a bit of, uh, kind of gives us some preconceived misconceptions. Uh, let's not call them angels, let's just call them malachim. So the malachim, he explained, were there to sustain that which the kachas put into play. Um, but the kachas were the source, and the malachim were different because they have intelligence, they have thoughts, they are sentient, um, and therefore they are different than the kachas, which are simply powers that run a cycle, they exist, they do what they need to do, but they don't have any intelligence or thought um, involved in that process. So then we talked about the um, good morning, afternoon, welcome, I'm glad you made it. Thank you for going all the way out to the other location. You know, you could have just fixed a brewer. It would have been faster. You know, it's like, what do you think about some brewer shows? So I was just saying, the, the coal or shmuel that we do here in the morning, so the, the main branches in Lakewood, yeah. they have an actual Starbucks machine there for everybody. Sure, of course. And that was down for two and a half months. They were waiting for a part. So and it was a $3,000 repair. From where? <laughs> Which part? I keep thinking that, like, they're just Please, guys, help yourself. That may be. They still need the pizzas, though. <laughs> they still need the brewer. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. All right. After that uh, brief commercial break, we're back. Uh, <laughs> answered by Lynn, actually. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, um, so as we were saying... The, we, we then got into how the, the influences of everything that goes on, um, again, starts up in those spiritual worlds, and then it works its way down till it gets here and manifests itself in the physical world. So that's the, the top-down influence. Then we talked about the flip side, which is the bottom-up influence, which is the actions, the thoughts, the speech, the decisions of mankind, those actually have the ability to go up and affect those kochos up there, and those will in turn come back down differently. So that's really what we were discussing, and we're going to continue um, in, that, in that discussion right now. Okay, any questions before we start? Now that it's 10.10? No? Okay. All right. So let's get started. All right. So we are um, the ulam. The ulam. Everybody got that? Anybody got that? Yes. Okay. All right. So the ulam. Uh, I'm gonna sit here so I can see you. Much better. That's it. No more cheating, you two. You guys are passing notes all class. I can tell. <laughs> okay. Here we go. So the ulam. So now you do have to know, because even man himself, not everything that a person does is done by their choice. 
Aval yesh mehem shiyu mitzad bechirasai. There are certain things that will be a matter of choice. The yesh acherim, but there are other things. She yisayviv lahem mitzad gezera al yaina that will actually come to a person because of Hashem's decree. For his reward or for his punishment. As I will explain um, in its proper place, which is in the next chapter, um, when we get there. So now this statement here is, is huge. This is a very, very difficult statement. I spent a lot of time researching this to try to get some good understanding of what exactly he's talking about. Um, it's not a simple thing, because typically we understand that everything that we do is our choice. Um, because anything that involves um, reward and punishment couldn't be something that Hashem makes us do. Because you can't make someone do something and then reward them for it or punish them for it. Because they didn't do it. You made them do it. So you did it. So it doesn't make sense, logically, that Hashem can force you to do something and then punish you for doing it. Or force you to do something and then reward you for doing it. So what exactly he means over here is, is, uh, is, is hard to understand. So there's a couple of, of elements. So Rav Chaim Friedlander, in his explanation, he says that this is even within the world of the spiritual. Even within the world of the spiritual, there, uh, there is such thing as Hashem making someone do something, which kind of makes our question a bit more, uh, <laughs> a bit more of an issue. So, so how to fully understand this, I think we need to take a quick look, which you don't have in front of us, I don't have it either, um, one of the other works of Ramchal that he wrote is called Maimur HaIkrim. And in Maimur HaIkrim he says that when it comes to anything that is a mitzvah or an avera, okay, you're fulfilling a mitzvah, committing a sin, anything in that regard cannot be decided from above. That has to be fully within our control, our choice, our free will. There's no denying that. The Gemara says... Everything is from on high, except for the fear of God. Meaning, the things that we choose, based on our fear of God or lack thereof, those are our choices. Everything else is out of our control. So, when, when the car breaks, that's not because I did or didn't do something necessarily. That's because this is what was supposed to happen. This is part of the, the plan, so to speak. But if I decide to get up in the morning and go to shul or not, that's my choice. That's 100% me. That, there's no other forces that are getting involved in that decision. That's just me. What am I deciding to do? And what we're held accountable for is clearly only our choices, like we said before. We can't be held accountable for things that aren't our choice. Okay, so now, how do we understand this? So it would seem that what he's saying over here is, that when it comes to things that are not related to mitzvahs or averas, sins, anything that's outside of that realm, then it's possible that Hashem is getting involved. Then it's possible that something needs to happen for some other purpose, and Hashem is going to make it happen. So, for example, someone might be walking down the street, and they trip. Trip and fall. That could be negligence. It could be your own choice that you simply weren't paying attention, and you should have been. Or it could be that was something that was sent from on high to happen to you for whatever reason. You needed that to happen, so it was going to happen. Or perhaps someone else needed to see that happen. Or both. And there is going to be an endless number of consequences to this, because not only are you personally affected, but people who are around you are affected, the people who are close to you are affected, your family, whoever, all these different parts and pieces are all going to be affected with the ripple effect because of this thing that happened. And that wasn't necessarily your choice. But that all might have happened because Hashem needed someone to do something somewhere. So if we'll stick with our example, somebody trips and falls. Okay? Now, somebody else is walking by and sees that happen. Maybe the reason this person trips and fell was because that person needed to be tested. How are they going to react to seeing somebody laying on the floor? I, I don't know who's, anyone who's been to any of these uh, 
you know, the security videos and all these courses about awareness and everything, they always have the actor who's laying on the floor, writhing in pain, and trying to see how many people are actually going to stop, right? And they say, it took 27 people till one person stopped, right? And then you realize, because everyone else thought the guy was drunk, right? But, <laughs> but you know, the, the idea there is that there is something to the fact that we are affected by our surroundings. So when we experience something, it's not by chance. That's Hashem is making things happen to put us in a position where we're going to be tested to see how we're going to react. So if that person walking down the street, Hashem already decided he needs to be tested in this regard, how is he going to react to seeing this? That might be the reason I fell. Now, that being said, don't think that that means that I didn't deserve to fall. Of course nothing's going to happen to me if I don't deserve it. So I deserve, let's say, uh, six uh, pain points okay, for something I did wrong. So I need to get X amount of pain. So that might happen by me falling. Now, it could have happened in 15,000 other ways, but it happened here and now because that person who's walking down the street also needs something. He needs to be tested how he's going to react to seeing me fall. So Hashem puts this all together and makes things happen. So these are the kinds of things that are not within our choice. These are the things that we do, but not necessarily by our choice. So according to the way he says it in the Maimur Ikrim, this is all only in regards to things that are not mitzvah or avera decisions. These are things that we just do or we don't do or that we just happen. Those are the kinds of things that are not necessarily within our control. Those things can be decreed from on high, and they can happen for all the different reasons that they need to happen. And there's an infinite number of those reasons that might come together to make something like that happen. Is it also, um, you talked in a case where something happens versus a choice. In other words, the scenario that we took is this concept of a person just falling. Correct. Um, losing balance, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But let's say, what about, let's say we, we, we talked about the umbrella, like opening an umbrella. You're saying there, where it's a mundane action that has a choice about that could open an umbrella or could not open an umbrella. Where would that fall? Because that, that would seem to it's not a mitzvah for Kinsey, and but it's not something that happens to us. Correct. So is that, where does that fall in? So the way he's explaining it in the Memor Ikrim, there's a there's a limitation to the things that are decreed from on high, and that is anything that is our choice in regards to mitzvah and aver. Anything outside of that realm can be decreed from on high. So I might make a decision to open that umbrella. That might not really be my choice. That might really have been implanted into my head to do this for whatever other reasons are going to be the outcome of what I've just done. As long as it's not a choice that's, that's following Hashem or not following Hashem, as long as it's not within that question, then it's not necessarily our choice. It might be. He says there are. There are times where it is. There are times where it's not. So something like that, which is a completely benign activity, that might be a decision that we think we're making, but the reality might be that that's actually been put into our heads because of some other outcomes that need to take place. Yes? So would that be the bow side of the mitzvah or the would that be a Okay, so so what, what Stephen's asking is that we have um, all right. So what Stephen's asking is that we have some concept of the way Hashem runs the world, um, and some of them are seemingly contradictory, even though they never are. But they seem to be. You have attributes of mercy, and you have attributes of justice. You have attributes of kindness, and you have attributes of harshness, and all these things that seem to contradict are really they all work together. But these are kind of the ways we see Hashem acting in the world. So what he's asking is, is, when Hashem makes someone do something, so to speak, is that a manifestation of din? Is that, when, is that when a judgment is being passed and saying, this is what has to happen? So I'm, I'm going to say yes, except that we, we have a tendency to think of din of judgment as something harsh. This could be very much for someone's benefit. A person could 
pick certain lottery numbers. It, you know, where the numbers come from is most likely not, you know, a product of their intelligence, <laughs> right? Usually those numbers are coming from some thought that ended up in your head. Now, that very well may, for the person who wins, Hashem obviously put that thought into his head, picked these numbers, and because that's what was going to win. So it doesn't have to be a bad thing. And we typically associate din with harsh judgments, you know, pain, hardship, things like that. But it's not. The reality is that din is anything that we deserve, anything that should happen. So, so yes, we can call it din, but we could also look at it as rachim, depending on what it is. So I don't want to really categorize it like that. I think sometimes yeah, it, it's, it's going to look like then. Yeah. yeah, it could be good. Sometimes it's going to look like it's going to look like harsh judgment. Before, yes. <laughs> right, now now let's take that a step further. What if you're the person standing next to the person who needs the umbrella and you've got the umbrella? So now you're the cause. Right? So these, these are all things that are involved in what he's saying over here. So as you're saying, there are times that these activities are our choices, and there are times that they're not really our choices. They might seem like our choices. But the reality is that these are things that are being put into our minds because of the, uh, the various calculations of things that need to happen for the world to continue on its course. And it could very well that that umbrella was just, there was nothing to do with, with uh, that could have been your choice or not. Because you said some, some of these things are and some of them aren't. So Correct. It could be that it had nothing to do with it. Right. right, right. It could have been 100% your choice. Mm-hmm. Could have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, that's, that's, that's what he's coming to do here. He's coming to say you have to realize that we've made categories and we've explained how things work. You have to realize that there's a lot of different options. And he's not coming to say necessarily how to know which one's which, but he's saying be aware that there are all these different mechanics that are at play that could potentially be the reason for something happening or not happening. All right. <coughs> okay, so let's continue. Ve'ulam. B'mashuhu nimshach achar ha-gezerah she'alav. When it comes to what happens because of this decree upon the person, yiyeh mishpatay kishar yonah ha'olam. At that point, it's going to be exactly the way everything else works. Meaning, she'etnu asa milamala lamata. That the, the movement that are caused by that which is above comes down below, meaning the, the kochos, the spiritual forces that are making things happen above, which will now make things happen below. It's going to be however those kochos, however those forces move things, that's the way they're going to work with people, just the way they work with natural phenomena. So the same way uh, a rainstorm we know is not a humanly created event at all, so too, a lot of the things, or some of the things, that people do are also products of Hashem's running the world, just like a rainstorm. So even though I don't associate a rainstorm with my activity, but I do associate my opening the door with my activity, the reality is they might both be from the exact same source. The, Things simply have no attribution. You talk about weather right there, and it's like at a certain point, you know, 
but like very clearly came up clear as face that you know butterfly flaps its wings in New York and eventually that results in what it ends up again being. Right. So there is eventually action be between our free will and the wire. But, 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 the, but the butterfly is not me. No, I understand. But if it, 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 it's a random physical act by an inanimate... Right, whatever it is, thing. we don't associate that with human choice. That's the point here. We don't associate with a human choice. Meaning, we understand the butterfly doesn't have free will. Right. The butterfly is not choosing consciously, I'm going to flap my wings now. Right? It's, just, it's something that happens. Theoretically, one person's action eventually can, can affect the entire world. Correct. Which is a theoretical idea. It's impossible to really understand on a practical basis. Right. That's what I'm saying. At a certain point, like, does every single thing always have attribution? Or does Within, every thing not have attribution? Does everything have a, like, a scientifically attainable attribution? Is that what you're talking about? You know, a like cause? Things, I mean, you're talking about spiritual, no, talking talking about spiritual about or physical? Free will. I'm talking about free will. Okay, so the answer is no. Not everything has a free will choice. That's exactly what we're getting at over here. We're saying that there are certain things that we decide that are 100% free will. There are certain things that we decide that are 0% free will. Those 0% free will things, he's saying, are really no different than the rainstorm. The rainstorm happens because of whatever scientific explanation for how that all came to be. But the reality is we know that all that started because there's these spiritual forces that are making all those physical things happen, which caused the other physical things to happen, which eventually caused the rain. The same is true of certain actions of our own. Even though we are beings of free will, not everything that we do is a product of that free will. There are certain things that we do that are a product of Hashem's running the world, it's not my choice. But I also mentioned last class that when we choose to do an action such as if we're killing a trigger on a gun, that the bullet, our action was to shoot that gun, but that may not hit our intended target. So in other words, if the bullet, doesn't, flashing, hit, if a, if a bullet doesn't hit a target, it's your fault. So, here, so, so let me give you the examples that we spoke about last week. The example that I gave was that there was, oh, I forgot which assassination was it. What did we decide last week with the president? I don't remember. One of the presidents, um, somebody, somebody went in. I don't know if they were successful. Somebody went into the White House. I, again, I don't remember if there was a successful attempt or not. But somebody went into the White House and with a gun and shot the secretary on their way to the president. Okay. But... Okay. The secretary lived because she had braces, and the bullet hit the brace, and she lost a tooth and was fine. Now, is there free will there? So yes, the person who shot the gun, he had a 100% choice, and he took a shot, and he did what should have accomplished his goal. But Hashem said, no, it's not her time, so I'm going to foil that. Now, of course, there's going to be a scientific explanation for how it got foiled, but all the, the movement, the slight this and that, how she turned her head or whatever, all of that was put into place. That wasn't her choice. It's not like she made a conscious decision, oh, I want to survive this, so I'm going to put my teeth out, right? <laughs> it, it was Hashem manipulated events to make sure that she would survive, even though the guy took a good shot. So, so that's sometimes that's that'll work, but sometimes it won't, because sometimes Hashem will not allow someone's plan to come to fruition. It's a matter of perspective. That's what I'm saying, like, Go ahead. Um, okay, so I forget the teacher's name in this case that got away. Um, crazy guy, right? Yeah, the guy with the Jr. Okay, so he, his intention was to kill Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan was walking from the hotel into his car, lifts up his left hand, right, just a wave. <clears throat> Hinkley's intention with the gun is to point and shoot with all intentions of aim, pull the trigger with his muscles, all these complicated muscles that make the gun accurately, specifically hit the target or not. Shoot, like the more you shoot a gun, the more you realize it's really hard to shoot a target, right? Because there's so many moving muscles and stuff. Okay. 